Praise God, saints. Praise God. Welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. This is the Watchman on the Wall, Nikki Pratt. Listen, I almost forgot my name. I am just like on fire right now. I'm telling you, I'm pumped up. I'm pumped up. God is getting ready to do some things in this hour. I can feel it. There's a lot of things that's going on with a lot of you. And, and you're going to hear about it tonight. Let me tell you, God knows what our troubles is. He knows what we need before we even ask. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, this title of this video is Prophetically Speaking. Prophetically Speaking. The Enemy's Plot. And, and, and this, this video is going to tell you about what is going on with you. Okay. First, before I even get started, let's get into a, a little prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Lord, we glorify your name. We exalt you, O Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this is the day that you have made, and we did rejoice and was glad in it. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you're the lifter of our head, Lord God, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Father, Lord God, I bind and take authority, Lord God, up over my region, up over this video, up over your people that is listening, Lord God. We bind in the name of Jesus all the demonic hindering spirits. Lord God, all mind controlling spirits, all mind binding spirits, we bind it and rebuke it in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord God, that your your presence, Lord God, overflow in this in, in our spaces, oh Lord. Father, Lord God, rejuvenate us, Lord God, fill us with your spirit. Lord God, we need a spiritual revival, Lord God, to happen within us, Lord. Lord God, use us, Lord God, in these coming days, Lord God, strengthen us in our weakness. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, let the hearts and minds of your people be open and ready to receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo! Y'all, this is going to be good. Listen, God, who? Is faithful and just. Yes, he is. Let me tell you something. This right here. Oh boy, I cannot. I'm. I'm. A, I'm. A, I, I can't bring it up right now because I don't want to stop this flow that I'm feeling. Look at it. My my video is pausing and stopping, but I don't care. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. If it looked like that it didn't come out right, I will re-record and re-upload. Okay, so I need you guys to get your Bibles and turn to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 6. And I'm going to read today out of the Amplified. I really, I, I kind of wanted to read out of the message, but um, I mean, it, it's powerful. Turn your books, your Bibles, your, your telephones, iPads, whatever you have, Nehemiah, chapter 6. All right, says the enemy's plot. We are living in the end times, and, and, the, and the Lord knows what we're going through. Watch this. Now, when Sambalat, Tobiah, Getham, the Arab, or the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there was no breach left in it, although at that time I had not set up doors in the gates, Sambalat and Geshe, sent word to me saying, come let us meet together at Shepherd in the plain of Ono. But they were planning to harm me. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work and cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave to come down to meet you? Hmm. They sent word to me four times in this way. And I answered them in the same way. Then Sembalat sent his servant to me in the same way the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, it is reported among the neighboring nations. And Gashma is saying that you and the Jews are planning to revolt and that it is the reason you are rebuilding the wall. And according to these reports, you are to be their king. Also, it is reported that you have appointed prophets to make a proclamation concerning you in Jerusalem, saying there is a king in Judah. Oh, there is a king in Judah. You better believe it. And now these things will be reported to the Persian king. So come now 
and let us consult together. I sent a message to him saying, such things as you are saying have not been done. He was saying, it ain't true. You are inviting them in your own mind. He said, you making it up. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking they will become discouraged with the work and it will not be done. But now, oh God, strengthen my hand. When I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was confined at home, he said, let us meet and take refuge together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple because they are coming to kill you and they are coming to kill you at night. But I said, should a man like me flee in fear and hide? Wait a minute, y'all didn't hear that. Did you hear what he said? He said, should a man like me flee and hide? Come on, saints of God, who are you? You have to know in this season who you, what, who your identity, what your identity is in Christ. He said, should a man like me, should a woman like you, should a minister like you, should a prophet like you, should an evangelist like you, we don't run and hide. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. To someone like me into the temple for the sanctuary to save his life. Remember the Bible says, whoever should save his life shall lose it. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I will not go. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Then I realized that God had not sent him, but he spoke this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sabalat had hired him. He was hired for this reason, that I would be frightened and do as he had said and sinned. Mm. You know, them your friends that's trying to get you to come on out to the club, you know, the ones that you used to hang with because they done forgot that you have put off the old man and you done put on the new man, amen, and you ain't that same person you used to be, y'all better kill me, so that they would have grounds to make a malicious report in order to censor and disgrace me. What they wanted to do was uh, make him look back. So he says, remember, oh my God, Tobiah and Sabalat, in regard to these actions of theirs, and also remember the prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who were trying to fight me. So the wall was finished. Mm, amen. On the 25th day and of the month of Elo in the 52 days, when all our enemies heard about it and all the Gentile nations around us saw it, they lost their confidence. For they recognized that this work had been accomplished, hallelujah, with the help of who? With the help of God. Moreover, in those days, many letters went from the nobles of Judah to Tobiah, and to Tobiah's letters came to them. For many in Judah were bound by oath to him, because he was in the son-in-law. He was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and his son Johanan had married the daughter of Meshalom, the son of Bechariah. Also, they were speaking about Tobiah's good deeds in my presence and reported to him what I said, going back telling him everything that he had said. Then Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. Wow. Oh, man. When I read that part about, shall somebody like me? Man, look. I almost stood up in my prayer closet. What? What? Somebody like somebody like me? God is asking, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Let me tell you something. What is going on in this season? There is a shaking and a shifting going on and has been for a few months. But now there are big changes, drastic changes, shifting us in position because of what's getting ready to take place. Oh, yeah. So you have to be ready. You have to forsake all of other things, okay? You're going to have to pick up your cross. This is the time to pick up your cross and follow Christ. And everything and everybody that is not with Christ is what? Is against him. So you already know. The enemy now is doing everything he can just like in this story, to get you out of position. Fear is from the enemy. 
attacking your health. There is now work to do for what's coming. The sheep is being separated from the goats. Even in your families, even in marriages, relationships, up churches, thank you, God. Even in churches, some of y'all sit in these churches, don't need to be. The Lord is saying, get out of there. He told some of y'all to bend leave, and you're still sitting there. You got to go. Whatever is not of Christ, got to go. Because a lot of y'all sitting in some of these churches, and they play in church and not be in church. Oh, I got to preach today. I got to preach today. Listen, fear is from the enemy. There is now work to do, okay, for what's coming. The sheep is being separated. Even now, the Bible says that he who is not with me is against me. Know that if the Lord has separated you, that he is moving you out of the way. And if you have forsook land, family, home, friends, mothers, whatever. God is getting ready to replace all that. You done lost some friends, you're going to get some new ones. You done, you're not talking to your mom, you're going to have another spiritual mom. Okay? The enemy knows that he has but a short time. There is a releasing that is taking place out of Egypt of bondage, meaning this. Some of you are in bondage in your mind. Bondage by Satan is holding you bound. You're wrestling. You're feeling confused. It is not you. You are not crazy, baby. It is Satan. He is not playing. Revelation 12, 12 says that Satan knows that he has but a short time. Okay? The Lord is releasing He's going to release some people out of bondages, out of their mind. You're in Egypt in your mind, in your heart. You're in Egypt in, in certain families, in relationship. The Lord is going to strengthen you. He is going to protect you. He is going to tear down your, 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 your uh, uh, Jericho walls and part your red seas. The enemy now is making up things against you. Some of you are in bondage, accusing you. Satan is accusing you. Making you believe things that you have left alone a long time ago. Bringing up old things from the past. Making you feel guilty. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Keep your eyes on Christ. Stay in your word. The enemy is trying to discourage you that you haven't made right decisions. Don't fall for it. Well, Nikki, how do we know that we have made the right decision? You know, because uh, this person is saying one thing and, and the enemy keeps telling me this. And, and how do I know that what I'm not doing is, is going to be wrong? Because when you make that decision, we walk by faith, not by sight. Go ahead and do it. You might have some fear. Do it. Do it. When you get there in your operation of your decision, how do you know you made the right decision? You're going to have peace. Peace will follow you. That's how you will know. Peace will follow you. That is the fruit of the Spirit. Watch for it. Also in this season, Prophetically speaking, beware of big distractions in this hour. Beware of big distractions. Shut them down. Shut them down. A lot of folks you left, you cut off, they're going to try to resurface. They're going to try to come back. They're going to ring your phone. Numbers you ain't seen before in a long time. Leave them where they are. They can't go where you're going. They can't go where you're going, where God is getting ready to, t uh, to take you. In this hour, if you are a child of God, you're having a tax right now. For no unexplained reason, and you're thinking, did I do something? No, you ain't. All you did was been a child of God. That's all you've done. No explained reason. The enemy is desperate 
attacking in your prayer time, study time. There is a heaviness, a, a, a sleepiness, a tired, an unnatural exhaustion that some of us is going through. You just tired. I mean, soon as you get home, you feel like doing things, but you just tired. You know, uh, it. I was um, taken to what is it? Uh, in in the book of Matthew, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he uh, was there with the disciples, and he went to pray. And when he come back, he found when he came back, he found the disciples asleep. He was like, "Hey." Can't you just pray with me for one hour? The Bible says that they were asleep. Uh, when he went back the second time, a heaviness was up on them. Wow. The enemy is trying to weigh you down, weigh you down, because he wants the work not to be done. He wants the work not to be done. I'm hearing this. Don't tell a lot of your business. Quit putting stuff on Facebook. Don't tell a lot of your business. Because just like in this story, you see what Nehemiah said in, 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 in the prophets that he sent. There were people that is coming in your life trying to find out your business. They're asking a lot of questions. Watch the ones that's asking a lot of questions asking you about this, asking you about your personal stuff. And don't give them the personal information. Don't do it. Because the enemy is going to try to use it against you. You see what happened in this story. God is so good. The Lord is so good. Okay? So he, he, the, the enemy wants the work not to be done. There is work to do. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But now Nehemiah said in this, but now, O oh God, hmm, strengthen my hands, said Nehemiah. The Lord is going to strengthen your hands. Because you, we have to walk in obedience, okay? We, we cannot leave our path from where we are. A lot of people are, are coming to you now, want to bring you down. They want to shut you down. They want to oppress you. No marvel. No marvel. I have adopted that word all of a sudden. I've been saying that for like three days now. No marvel. God's got you. Okay? The Lord is not sending some of these folks. Either you will know, you know how you will know them? Because they're going to oppress you. They're going to stress you out. They're going to promote fear. You know what you do? Delete them. By be gone. What was that saying uh, some years back? You are the weakest link. That's what you say. Delete them. This work will be done, said the Lord. Everything the enemy will try is going to fail. It's going to fail. Did you hear Nehemiah said that they came at him five times? And he said he sent back the same message. When people come at you, you tell them the same thing. I cannot be bothered. I am about my father's business. I mean, I've been shutting stuff down so much and, and trying to make a pattern of it. My One of my twin daughters was trying to contact me last night, and I was in a daze trying to look at my phone. And when I, I, I saw the number, I didn't recognize it. And I looked at it, and I was like, and then I saw her text. Mama, I need you. Something, my my tire is low or something, uh, or something to that effect. And then I tried to call her back, and she didn't answer. I was like, like, what? Girl, your baby is stuck out somewhere. We're, we're talking about a tire low, but praise God, she was okay. She went on where she, wherever she was going on that low tire, and uh, we handled that today. But uh, I... I she said she was knocking on my door and everything. I didn't hear nothing. But I phone calls I went, shut down. Shut it down. So this work will be done. Okay? Did you hear the things that came out in this story? And if you get time, if you didn't really understood, because I was reading kind of fast, I know I was. But uh, I, I was 
Oh, man. This is just a blessing to me. Okay, but read it in the message version or any other version to get a full meaning. And you, trust me, you're going to see yourself in there somewhere. Okay? Um, in this story, they came to attack. They attacked the, uh, to attack and on personal things. We gonna, there's going to be attacks. I bind it. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. But the enemy is going to try to come at you. Pray and plead the blood of Jesus over your vehicles. And the enemy is just going to try to come at you on, on personal things, in personal type ways. Say no marvel and keep praying, okay? There is a war coming, y'all, spiritually and naturally. There is a war coming spiritually and naturally. We have to be able to stand in this evil day, having done all to stand. We have to armor up many were called, but few are chosen. We are soldiers equipped for God's work. You wake up every morning. I am an overcomer. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. For the law of spirit of life in Jesus Christ, it had made me free from the law of sin and death. I shall live and not die. I shall live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, you said you will satisfy me with long life. Nothing by any means shall come now my dwelling. Okay? It's getting time to fight. Women, get ready. Those of you who are in ministry, you've been oppressed. You've been bound in your churches. You've been wanting to start Bible studies. You've been wanting to uh, open up your, your, your own little churches. You want to do street ministry. It's coming. It is now. Now is the time. Get it done. Get it done. Don't let nobody tell you. Don't let nobody tell you, uh, uh, try to put fear in you uh, about going out in the streets and how bad it is. Get out there. Did you hear it? Not hear Nehemiah said the enemy was amazed because they they knew after all them tries that God had helped them. I'm telling you right now, get out and do it. God is with you. He is covering you. Okay. Um, all those leaders, all you leaders who are oppressing people in your church, mainly women, you are getting ready. To be dealt with. You are getting ready to be dealt with. You cannot muzzle an ox. You got a problem with a woman preaching. You better take it up with the Lord thy God. Because guess what? We coming, baby. We coming. The Lord reigns on the just and the unjust. And let me tell you, when he said he pour out his spirit on all flesh, he was not gender specific. And there's a lot of a lot of you who who is, is strong, you strong women. You have authority. Use it. Don't lose it. Use it. Don't don't let anybody intimidate you. When somebody come at you and say, Who ordained you? Who covering you? What church you from? Say the Lord ordained me by that same spirit that ordained you. Hmm? All right. I ain't got time to get them scriptures, but I can show you some things. All right. So unexplained money, wealth in our finances, bad credit is getting ready to be good credit. It's happening now, naturally and already it is happening now. You hear, if you've been a subscriber of mine, you've heard me say in the past that whatsoever is going on in the Spiritual realm is manifesting in the natural. Whatever is going on in the natural is going on in the spiritual. Okay? In the natural, Trump is saying that there is an increase. Y'all, this is so prophetic. You know, um, there, there's some of us watch us watchmen. There are more that... that uh, I don't have time to really explain this. But there, there are some watchmen that, that really, really hear. We all hear. But there are some of us that hear with our eyes. Hear with your eyes. I mean, prophetically, you got to see this. Trump is saying 
that there is going to be an increase in our pay checks. We don't know. A lot of people saying significant. Some saying mediocre, not much, whatever. It don't matter. Okay? Know this. If there is an increase going on naturally, there is an increase coming spiritually. Okay? Okay, so um, we shall see. Okay, what, what what is going to take place? But you need to see this prophetically. It is already happening. Let me show you what I mean. There's going to be there's going to be mysterious like if you've been sitting up waiting on a car, or, you know, you sitting there saying, oh, "My my credit is not right. I'm I'm not going to be able to go." God is getting ready to do some super on some natural. Okay, the Lord showed me yesterday. Yesterday. I went into work, and I was telling my, my uh, co-worker about it, my best friend about it, and uh, she somehow went on her phone it, it part of the, later on that day and looked in her bank account. There was some unexplained money that was deposited in her account from uh, a department store. I'm not going to name the name. And she said, I ain't bought no shoes from this place. And it was a pretty, it was a little significant amount. It wasn't no little bitty money. It wasn't fifteen dollars. It wasn't twenty either. But the point is, it mysteriously got in there. And she asked her daughter. She said, "Well, she would be the only one." But I don't. I didn't give her my credit card. She asked her daughter, "No, Mama, I, I didn't use it. I didn't use it." She went straight to the bank and withdrew it. Cha-ching. Money is going to show up from places like you unexplained. You were like, what? what? Where did that come from? Some of y'all sent some of these testimonies. I, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to read something real quick. Uh, Matthew, 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 Matthew. For those of you who are worried, Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. And I'm going to read this in the King James Version this time. All right. Okay. Verse 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Him. Followed. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. He who, Jesus Christ, was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But then, but the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Let me tell you something. The enemy can be something if, you, if we let him. But we don't have to allow him. Here you had the disciples had Jesus the Christ himself in the ship, on the ship with them. We we don't have Jesus the Christ, you know, in, in our house, in, in our cars, in our ships, physically. But we have him spiritually. And if they had him naturally, physically, and they were in fear. But here, we walk by faith and not by sight. So the Bible says that he will never leave us or forsake us. He will be with us at all times. Just know this. Every trial, tribulation, everything that you are going through, trust and believe that the Lord know about everything. He says he know about every little strand of hair on your head. They numbered. He know everything. He know that person, what that person doing on your job. He know about it. He know about it. 
He know about how bad people are treating you because you have turned your life around to Christ. He know about it. In this story of Nehemiah, he said, Lord, he named some people to buy and such so please don't let them get away. Trust me, the Lord ain't going to let them get away. He's not. Okay. Um, now, back to what I was going to say, and this is a good time to do it, too, because I'm 30 minutes in. There's somebody probably, you know, a little upset because I'm 30 minutes in, but, uh, I didn't want to bring this up early on because it was like, you know, I was on my Jesus high, I like to call it, okay? The Holy Spirit was, uh, man, but listen, this is a note to any new or maybe even former YouTuber, I don't know. No, not no, not none of the the, the former ones. I, I can't even see that. There's got to be some of these new ones that's doing this. Look, there is no such thing as drive-bys on this channel. That's not being arrogant. That's not being facetious. That's just letting you know. I don't operate by man. Man don't control me in what I do. I try to operate by the Holy Spirit and his leading. When you start letting men, uh, man, must I say, and I say that in plural, I mean uh, unisex, control what you do, then God is out of it. And I won't allow it. I won't have it. So... What I'm saying is this. This is not McDonald's, people. This ministry is not McDonald's. People eat steak and taters over here. Again, I'm not saying that arrogantly or, or boasting in anything. If I'm a boasting in anything, I'm a boasting Christ. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I, ain't no shortcut around here. Ain't no happy meals here. Ain't none. Okay? That's what's wrong with some of these churches now. You know, they have a time on the Word and the Holy Spirit. At this time, we're going to do this. And this time, and, and the Holy Spirit be want to flow. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you a prime example. Somebody would, you would, you thought, like, somebody come in it. Let, let me tell you what I'm saying. Somebody come in it on one of my videos and said, um, uh, uh you know, I like your videos. I really do. But, you know, some of your videos are too long. It's 40-something minutes, and already you have been saying the same thing over and over about something about Moses. D just get to the point. I was watching your 444 video. All I wanted to know is what it means. You would have passed out if you would have watched. I, there was a video I was watching today partially at work. It was an hour and six minutes. Before he even started talking, he praised and worshiped. He was at about almost 18 minutes in. I needed that at that time. I was praising and worshiping with him. See, what I'm getting at is, you don't know what the Holy Spirit going to speak, going to send, going to tell you. Because you want to drive by, rush by, a tickle ear, feel good. You want to, I, mean, I, need to, I need it right now, right now. No, you can't rush the Holy Spirit. That's what's wrong with some of these churches now. You want something for the right now. No. And again, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying you either with the ministry or you're not. Nobody is holding you down, making you listen. A meal is better than fast food any day. I'm going to say that again. A meal is better than fast food any day. Do not leave a comment pertaining, also, I'm saying this, do not leave a comment pertaining to anything else other than the topic. It promotes confusion and discard, okay? I ain't having it. Don't do that. Don't be used by the enemy. Don't do that. And and look, YouTube is so 
versatile. I mean, again, nobody is holding you down. You don't want to hear it? Thumbs down. That's the protocol. Thumb it down. Keep it moving. Then, if you if you busy at work, you're trying to watch it at work. This is how I have to do it sometimes. Watch as much as you can. The way is the way YouTube have it set up now. When you pull it back up, it it starts back playing where you left off. There is no excuses. So what is your problem, baby? I'm telling you, some of y'all gonna you you gonna mm, you gonna miss out on a lot of things because you want you want this rush thing. No, don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, there there may be a word for you. I mean, it, it's an hour long, forty minutes long. Watch as much as you can. When you get through doing what you're doing, go back and watch it. Or you don't have to watch it. You can go off and find out the answer or find out whatever is being said somewhere else. That's the difference between the ministry on uh, YouTube and the ministry in the church. You know, you can get up and go as you please. In the ministry in the church, most of you don't hold up one finger. you you kind of scared to get up and go to the bathroom. You can do whatever. You can pause it. You can do whatever. Wow. But anyway, um, I hope you guys have been blessed by this. I know I have. Pray without ceasing. Keep your eyes on Christ. Um, and read your word. Okay? Lots of powerful videos coming from this way. Women, women. There are messages and words, rhema words, that the Lord is getting ready to release in this coming season that people are going to feel like they never heard before. That's just God and his awesomeness. He is not in this confined box where, we, you, you know, he's omnipotent. And that's how the word is. When you go in, you read it one time, and you go back in, and you see something else. It says something else. So, all right. I love you guys. I hope this you or you've been blessed by this. See you next video. Thanks.